We are born of God. You cannot check my natural DNA to find my true identity because my, my DNA is spiritual. It is from God. That is my identity. Welcome to The Miraculous Life. I'm so happy that you're able to join me in the study of God's Word today. And I'm Steve Hannett, and I'm so excited each time because when we study God's Word, we study how to bring heaven to earth. And today we're going to be talking about the breakthrough you've been needing in the realm of healing. Healing is an exciting topic. It is exciting because it is the actual manifestation, the actual now demonstration of the heaven breaking into earth. You know, there are so many things that we could speak about in religion and theology. But when we speak about healing, we're talking about the rubber meeting the road. We're talking about tumors disappearing. We're talking about legs that didn't work beginning to work. We're talking about limbs growing, blind eyes opening, deaf ears hearing. We're, we're talking about the actual invasion of love into your hearts and lives. Now, there's a very, very big difference, though, between studying healing and having your mind irrevocably changed concerning the message of healing. There are so many people that study healing, but their minds still do not remain changed. So I want to talk with you today about the idea that people are searching for their family lineage. They're going to companies to try to find out where they've come from. To try to get at their identity. We do not need to go to Ancestry.com and many other companies to find out our identity. You see, a lot of times... We're not only trying to find our identity, to find out what ethnicity we come from, or to find out what background we have, or who did what in our ancestral lineage. We're also trying to find out in our families what kind of genetic problems exist, what markers exist for which diseases and which family members. And we have a very strong focus on seeing ourselves through our natural lineage. But if you want to stand in the power of God, if you want to experience the breaking out of heaven into earth, we're going to have to receive some things of truth that are going to enable the shifts and the breakthroughs in your lives. And one of those breakthroughs is who do you belong to and where do you come from? You know, Genesis, all the way back in chapter 5 of Genesis, there's this amazing verse that reiterates, that repeats what's in Genesis 1 concerning who we are or concerning the creation of God. It says, this is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. Listen, this is, this is restating what God says in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28, that we're made in the image of God. But that is before the fall, not today. So I'm going to continue reading Genesis chapter 5 and find out this amazing shift. It says in verse 3, 
And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness. After his image and named him Seth. What is the Bible teaching? That God originally made man in God's likeness. But once Adam fell in sin, Adam's son, Seth, was now made in Adam's image, not God's. This means if I wanted to biblically look at my natural heritage, born in the natural, my physical ancestral uh, 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 heritage, I would have to look at not just my grandfather, not my great-grandfather, not 200 years, not 500 years, not 1,000 years. I would have to go all the way back to my great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandfather, and I'd end up at Adam. And I would end up with an image that looks nothing like God. I would end up with an image spiritually that is filled with wickedness, darkness, filled with death. I'd have to look at my lineage and say, it is a cursed lineage. I would have to look at that lineage and say, it is filled with every kind of sickness, every kind of disease, and multitudes of curses in that lineage. I thank God today that you and I, as a believer in Jesus Christ, do not need to look at our natural lineage to find out who we are. Because the moment that you and I received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we were changed. Let me read for you the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 12. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 12. Listen to this amazing word. God, I thank you for this word. This Bible says, John chapter 1, verse 12, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name. Now, verse 13. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Oh, brothers and sisters, the Bible is saying that when we are becoming a child of God, we are born of God. We are born of God. You cannot check my natural DNA to find my true identity because my, my DNA is spiritual. Spiritual, it is from God. That is my identity. Now, of course, we're still in these bodies, but this is where we must shift our mind. If you want breakthrough for your healing, then you must identify with your born-again supernatural nature, not your natural nature. Because the inner man, your spirit, that is your true identity. Listen to the teaching of Jesus even further in John chapter 3. He says in verse uh, 6, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Praise God when we begin to understand that what is of the flesh is of the flesh, but your identity is in the Spirit. Who God has created you to be. Now there was a family member in my own family that was told by the doctors that she may have a marker for a specific disease. And she asked me if I believed she should get that test because she was concerned about me. And her love and beautiful sensitivity was wanting to know if maybe I was at risk for this disease. And I had to tell this individual with great gentleness, but yet with great joy, I don't need to find out the sickness that's part of a genealogy that I no longer belong to, but rather I belong to the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the second Adam. I've been begotten of God. I've been born into a new family. 
And if I look at Jesus because I've been begotten of Jesus and I've been made of Jesus, no doctor would ever find one marker for sickness and disease in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ and his whole lineage is free. They're free from all sickness and disease. If I consider myself who I am in the natural, I will live naturally. But if I consider who I am in the spirit, who I've been born and begotten of God, I will then be able to receive all the blessings that flow in the spirit and override, listen now, override any curse that may be flowing in the natural world. In Matthew chapter 9, let's look at that gospel in Matthew chapter 9 we see Jesus Christ meeting a man who was paralyzed. And he is naturally not able to walk. It says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. Now I know for some people listening, you may be thinking, Pastor Steve, you still need to take care of your natural body. Amen. We do need to take care of our natural body. We need to eat well. We need to exercise. We need to do that. But we need to understand that the spiritual change that's taken place when you were saved actually invades the curse operating in the natural world. Some people may be thinking, no, that's not true. But that's why I want you to look again with me in Matthew 9. There was a man who was paralyzed. He's physically not able to walk. Jesus said when he sees their faith, son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. Now just think through this with me for a moment. He says, son. <laughs> you see, he's using family language. He doesn't say servant, he doesn't say man, he doesn't call him by his real name that his parents gave him. He calls him by his identity, son. His faith in Jesus enabled him to be son. His faith in Jesus enables him to be son. Oh, how powerful is this for you and I to begin accepting the heritage of, of the title of son, of daughter, he uses the same thing in Luke chapter 13 when he heals a woman who's hunched over. He calls her daughter of Abraham. He's referring to the faith position, the position that faith is enabling them to walk in. Well, what does Jesus do? He says, son, be of good cheer. Thy sins are forgiven you. Now, a lot of people may wonder, and I've preached this so many places to help people understand that when God says your sins are forgiven you, this seems strange. The man has a natural problem. But Jesus brings the spiritual solution of the forgiveness of sins in the midst of the natural problem. What does he say? He says, very simply, for which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven you, or rise up and walk. You see, you may, son, be dealing with a natural problem that came from your mom or dad or from your heritage, but I tell you, you are son. You are a child of God. Your sins are forgiven you, and that spiritual change eradicates the curse in the natural body. Oh, we're seeing miracles happening today in our ministry. Many ministries in the whole globe are understanding when you become a child of God, you become an heir of God. We need to get this. We need to change our mind. Healing has broken out in our meetings just by preaching things like this that people begin to understand, praise God, that they themselves are a child of God. They no longer are bound to the kingdom of darkness and their spiritual DNA is now kind of invading their natural bodies in a positive, blessed way. Let me read for you Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Let me read this because there's no verse to me clearer than this text to help us understand that we are now in a different kingdom. The Bible says in 
Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, verse 13. I'm going to read this very slowly. He says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Oh, Jesus. Do you realize that when you became saved, that you've been moved from one kingdom, from underneath one power to God? Do not find your identity. Do not find your destiny. Do not ask yourself, what is possible for me to do in this life by looking at your natural? No. Look at what Jesus the Christ has done in your life. Begin to have your mind declare and saying, I'm a child of God. I have what God says I have. If he says I am healed, then I am healed. If he says that I can have the filling of the Holy Spirit, then I can have it. And I'll tell you, if you primarily live with your identity in the Spirit of God, it's going to invade everything in your natural life. Isn't it time to make the shift? Isn't it time to no longer thinking of how you should maybe live in just the natural, but how you should have your identity moved by Jesus Christ of Nazareth, declaring that he makes us sons and daughters? There's a very powerful description of this. So if you will, go with me to Exodus chapter 6. And we're going to look at verse 6. There's a house described in Exodus that we're going to look at. And you can read with me again. Exodus chapter 6 verse 6. Therefore say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you as my people and I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, your God, who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians." This text is really so rich in helping us to understand the Great Commission. So rich in helping us to understand what God does for us. You see, they were underneath burdens in the Egyptian land. They were underneath bondage. God says, I'm going to pay for you. I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to bring you out. But rescue you from what? Rescue you from the bondage. You see, in Exodus chapter 20 we hear the, uh, a term used um, that's so, so powerful. Um, and it describes how the house of bondage is, or how the house of Egypt is a house of bondage. When you were saved, you were brought into a new family. You were brought into a new house, and it is no longer a house of bondage. Did not the Egyptian's life change? Yes, they did. Now they have slaves and they use those slaves. But when those slaves were released, when the Israelites were released, did not the lives of the Israelites change? In fact, do you know that the Psalms reveal that when God delivered the Israelites from Egypt, that he delivered them from the house of bondage, but not only that, but that there was not one feeble or sick person in the entire nation. What a prophetic picture of the gospel of Jesus Christ that we have been delivered from the house of bondage underneath Satan, steeped in sin. We've been delivered from it. We've been redeemed. We're no longer part of the house of bondage. Brothers and sisters, we're in a new family and you have a new dad, and you have a new inheritance, and the inheritance is healing, it is peace, it is love, and we need to get this in our minds. You know, so frequently people will ask and they'll say, you know, I, 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 I love Jesus, but, but still I have sickness and disease. And I'll ask them questions and I'll say, what is your name? In fact, we were just in the state of New Jersey at a, a, a conference called Healing Now, and we saw the Lord do many, many miracles. And there was one woman, and she was uh, having her jaw locked. She couldn't move her jaw well. 
And uh, it was after the conference meeting had ended and she came to me personally and she was asking for prayer. And I asked this woman who was a believer, I said, what is your name? She gave me her name given by her mom and dad. And I said, no. And she looked at me very strangely. I said, your name is Daughter of God. She had a big smile on her face. And I said, I'm praying for a daughter of God who is no longer in a house of bondage, who does not find her identity in the natural. And it doesn't matter in the natural how that happened. We know that it's the curse. We know that the sickness was, was from the enemy and it's not in father's house and now receive the inheritance as a daughter. We prayed for her in just a few seconds. I said, go ahead and move your jaw. She moved it and she had a smile and she had joy because there was no more pain. Everything was moved into alignment. You see, I frequently get to see sons and daughters receiving the supernatural power of God. And they're doing it because they're, in, they're receiving the inheritance that is supernatural. Now, we need to have faith. We need to have faith. We need to tell our souls, bless the Lord, your mind, your will, and your emotions. And it's so easy to think naturally. But did you know that thinking naturally, the Bible says, is not the way to peace? No, I'm, I'm going to show you something before we go to bless you in Romans chapter 8. I'm going to go there and we're going to see a verse to tell you how to think. Praise God. This is Romans chapter 8 and it's verse 6. Now I'm going to look at verse 5 actually and then verse 6. This is what the Bible says. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded, fleshly minded, is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh, old nature, cannot please God. Today is the day that you make the change. Make a decision to change your mind about who you are what family you belong to, what inheritance is yours, because as a child of the living God, you did not receive a curse from the Father through the Son, Jesus. You received freedom. You received healing. You received love. You received a spirit of adoption. My goodness, it's time. Dance. Jump up and down. Somebody shout the praises of God because you've been changed. You've been redeemed. You've been healed. Now, if you have pain in your body, if you have a diagnosis in the natural, it's time to activate it. And I'm going to tell you how to do it right now. You speak to that problem. Speak to the wickedness that's behind it. And tell it, I am a child of God. I am an heir of Jesus Christ. My bread is healing. I am free from the curse of the law of sin and death. I have life. I have Jesus. Jesus is my healer, and I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, sickness, leave my body. I have nothing to do with my old nature or my old lineage. I now am part of the family of Jesus Christ where there is blessing. I command all sickness, leave my body in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Oh, at that time, my brothers and sisters, you labor in prayer with faith like that, and you're going to see the supernatural breaking into the natural. You're going to see signs. You're going to see wonders. You're going to see miracles happening. You're going to lay hands on the sick. You're going to be able to lay hands on your family members. You're going to go to church and you're going to say, come on, we've got to remember who we are and whose we are and what we have in Christ. Stand up. No longer be thinking naturally. No longer project the curse at all in Jesus' name. Now, I want to tell you, after the Lord touches you, I want to encourage you to go to everyhousenow.org. You can even go to our YouTube channel. Just type in YouTube slash The Miraculous Life. Visit us on The Miraculous Life on Facebook. Share your testimony and your breakthrough. It's the Word of God for the glory of God. May God bless you and I love you in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The victory is yours. Let's go for it. My name is Steve Hannett, and I'm the founder of Every House, the ministry that produces the miraculous life. I'd like today to talk with you about prayerfully becoming a financial partner with our ministry to get the word of God out to the nations. You know, we've got an amazing team that's dedicated to seeing lives change. Many people don't know that when they're becoming a financial partner, that they're literally joining the work with us and literally becoming part of the family to produce fruit in the nations. Now, we understand that your tithes belong to your local church, and we encourage you to be faithful to your local congregation. So we also understand that there are offerings that you can invest in ministries like Every House to help support the work that we're doing. Simply go to everyhousenow.org, click the Give button, and you'll be presented with a series of options of how to partner with us. God bless you, and we thank you in advance for your love. We pray you've been blessed by The Miraculous Life and know the Lord Jesus desires His best in your life. The Miraculous Life is a production of Every House, a missions ministry focused on releasing the power of God, establishing strong churches, and developing sound leaders who advance the kingdom of God. Your love gift to Every House is tax deductible in accordance with the law. We believe your tithes belong to your local church and your donations to our ministry are received as offerings for the advancement of the Great Commission.